Hey, what's up guys? My name is Activator and I'm a Twitch streamer over on twitch.tv slash activator and today I'm going to show you guys something kind of cool that you guys might be interested in and that's how to install and set up your brand new move graph transition and stingers. Just keep in mind that all the stingers and transitions available on move graph can be applied to everything I'm about to show you guys here today. I'm talking OBS and slobs and any other programs you can find even some that you can edit with. So let's jump right on in and show you how to set up your brand new stinger. So today we're going to be looking at a brand new stinger called Ninas. And you can see it comes in a variety of colors of your choosing. So make sure to get the one that suits your best needs. Once you get your download downloaded, you're going to go ahead and grab your brand new zip file. Now these files need to be unzipped so you can access the internal files on the inside. So you're just going to go ahead and right click and you're going to hit extract all. Now when you do this, it's going to create a brand new folder right up here. And you can see I'm going to go ahead and grab this folder, bring it on over because that's the folder that contains everything that we're going to need for this stinger. So when you open up this folder, you're going to see that you get your main folder. Now that's going to be the Ninas purple here today. So I'm going to open that up. You're going to see you're going to get a bunch of folders with inside of the folder. So inside here, you got a couple different things here. You got some extras. You got the uh, the assets for stream. You got some resources and you got a little uh, image down here about the settings. And we'll get to that in just a minute. When you click on the for stream folder, you're going to see that you're going to get three files. Now, each one of those files contains a different stinger. And I'm talking just about the audio for each one of these. So you get the three different choices here. You get the sound, you get the lower volume sound, or you have no sound. So when you open up the resources folder, you're going to see that there is a dot move file inside of this folder. Now that file, when you open it up, will show you exactly the stinger that we're going to be working with today. So when I open this up, that's the stinger we're going to be applying to our setup today here inside of OBS. Now this will work for slobs as well, but today we're going to show you exactly how to install for OBS. Now this file is not what you actually want to be using for your streams. You actually want to use the WebM files. And if you go back here towards the four stream section, these files are .webm and those files are much, much smaller and won't give you any hiccups when trying to get them installed into OBS. Now this move file here is actually really good for if you are editing a video and you want to put this transition with inside your video, maybe you're not live streaming, maybe you just want to add a nice little stinger in between your two clips that you have. So you're going to take this transition file right here and you're going to bring it into your editing software and you're going to be able to add a transition within the edit. And that way you have your stinger there as well. So once we're inside of OBS, maybe you have your own scene set up and whatnot, but we're just going to create something very simple for you guys to kind of get your eyes around what this stinger is actually doing. So I'm going to go ahead and create a second scene here. We're going to call this scene two. So inside of scene two and scene one, I'm going to create a color source. And that color source is going to be maybe let's call it pink. And in scene one, we're going to create another color source. We're gonna make another one. We're just going to make it blue. So you can see we have two different colors here. And when I swap between scenes, you're seeing it's using a uh, the default fade and it looks nice, but I want to take it to the next level by using a stinger. And to do this, we're going to come over here to the drop down menu. And when you click on this, you're going to see down here, there is an add stinger. And when you click on that, you're going to title your stinger, however you want to call it. And on today, I'm going to call this the Ninas stinger. And I'm going to hit OK. And now we got the next page to go ahead and start to add our stinger. Now, again, inside of our uh, our brand new folder that we download, you can see the stinger is sitting in the four stream section and we do have those three options. So you want to make sure to select the best option that works for you. And I'm going to go with the full audio purple Ninas. I'm going to come over here to browse and I'm going to open up the Ninas four stream section and I'm going to select the one that has audio. I'm going to go ahead and click open. And you can see now we have something loaded in here and you can always test this by coming down to the bottom and hitting preview transition. So you can see it plays, but there's no audio. So right off the bat, you want to make sure to turn on your audio. Now you could have the audio just play for you, or you can also have it play for your stream and you. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the uh, monitor and output because that's going to send the audio to my stream as well as I'm going to be able to hear it when it happens. So now when I preview it, you can see that the stinger is working as intended, but you can see it's not transitioning at the right part. Now that's because you need to add a delay in between when the scene transfers from scene A to scene B. And to do that, they give you a nice little file back inside of the folder that you downloaded called settings. Now, when you open this up, it's going to give you exactly what you need to know inside of slobs. You're going to set a time in milliseconds to 500, or you can also set it to frames and set it to your 20th frame when the transition occurs and inside of OBS, you have the choice to choose either one. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it on milliseconds. Now, if we look back at that settings image that we saw a moment ago, you can see we need 500 milliseconds to make the transition seamless. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, enter in the 500 seconds here. And when I hit preview, so you can see that a is completely hidden before B pops up. 
Now, if I set this to maybe a thousand and I hit OK, you're going to see something kind of bad. And when I hit transition, you can see we're still on A and then you see the change to B and you don't want to do that. You want to hide that transition. So I'm going to bring this back on down to 500 milliseconds and hit preview. And you can see just like that, it automatically swaps. Now, if I'm thinking that that transition is a little too loud for me, so maybe I can go back into my file here and actually select the one with a little lower volume. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the lower volume, hit OK. And now when I preview it, you can see it's a little bit quieter, but I'm actually feeling the one with more volume. So I'm going to go back to the original. Now I'm going to select the one with full audio. Now you could go with no audio or the lower, but I'm going to choose the full volume. I'm going to hit OK. And uh, just one more time, and I'm going to test it. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to hit OK. Now when I switch from scene one to scene two, you can see it's a nice seamless transition and you don't see the flaw. To demonstrate the problem more with a transition point, I'm going to use another stinger so you guys can get a better idea. So to demonstrate a problem with having a wrong transition point, I'm going to show you guys the exact same situation, but this time I'm going to show you with a different stinger from MoveGraph. So I'm going to hit preview on this Crex transition right here, and when you see it change, you can see for a split second, you can actually see it go from A to B, and now it's going to go from B to A. You're going to see the previous scene, and you don't want to be able to see it. So when I hit preview, Ah, and right there, you see for just a split second, you see the B. So you need to make sure that you're selecting the right amount of milliseconds. I happen to know this is actually 733 milliseconds to get the perfect seamless transition. So when I hit preview, now you do not see the transition. So right there, you can see that the transition happens behind closed doors in a sense here. When the object flies in, you, can, you don't see the change between B and A or A and B. It is hidden by the element itself. And that is because you fine tune finding out the exact millisecond the transition happens. Now, each one of these stingers does come with its file to tell you guys exactly the perfect amount of time, either in frames or milliseconds, to tell you exactly what the transition point needs to be. Now, if I go back to frames here, I happen to know that this one is 22, but for this demonstration, we're going to select 10. Now, when I hit preview, you're going to see that it changes right there. And if I even set it lower, you're going to see the change happens way too fast. So if you're trying to make the seamless transition for your audience, they're going to see B when they shouldn't be seeing B. They should be seeing A when the transition fully wipes over. So when I set this back to 22 here, as I know that that's the point where it, uh, it transitions, I hit preview, you don't see it is hidden. The object hides it. So the stinger is doing its job. So everything's looking pretty good here. One last preview. That's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now when I switch between each scene, you can see it's still working as intended and it looks great. Now, just one note, you don't want to use the move file that's inside the resources folder. That file is a little bit bigger. And when you're streaming, you're going to have a load on your PC. And at some times when you play that transition because of its size, it might end up causing audio lag or anything like that. And you don't want that. You want to have a nice seamless transition. So you want to go back into the for stream and you want to select the .webm file. Those files are much smaller and they work great. So this covers how to install your brand new Stinger. I hope this uh, helped you out. I appreciate you guys watching. Happy streaming. Good luck. And I'll catch you on the next video. All right. Bye.